All right, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, welcome back if you've been here before. So a bit of a disclaimer and a different start to this one. There's going to be some clips in this video that's definitely going to lead to some mixed opinions. And I just wanted to make it clear from the start that my intention on this trip was at no point to endanger any form of livestock. My respect for the wildlife is endless and every video I put up is me out in the countryside. Saying that, a few years ago, I took on the responsibility of having a dog. And the reason I did that is because I would assume the same as most people, I wanted a loving pet that could be part of the family network. And part of that entails giving the dog the best possible life he could have. Walking him around the same field over and over again, day after day, is by any means and anyone's standards boring as heck. I've took him on a couple of trips before and it's never been that easy, but I've really wanted to take him on a wild camping trip and give him the best possible day of his life ever. All that being said, what you're about to see in some of the clips on the video wasn't planned and I don't feel great about it and I won't be taking the dog again. No livestock or anybody was harmed or anything damaged, but it just didn't go quite to plan. All that being said, I think it's about time we got on with today's episode. Let's do it. I gotta say, as a human being, I want for a few things in life, you know, like the winning lottery numbers, or maybe a 40 million pound yacht to sail around the world. Or how about the answer to immortality or how the universe itself was created? But apart from those things, I've been after something else quite recently, a two-man tent, and this week I finally got one. So I figured, as the weather's absolutely blazing this weekend, it'd be rude not to get out and test it and take a motley with me. And because that's probably not going to be enough stress already, I figured I'd bring a mini me with me as well. Honestly, this is going to be a mission. I should rename the dog Fenton because he's an absolute nightmare. We're heading about four or five miles up a hill and I've got a 20 kilo bag to carry. Seriously, this wild camp has an endless possibilities for absolute chaos. So I think it's about time we ensued a bit of that chaos. Got the old car set up, loaded up and rumble our way up to the destination. Let's do it. spot for the crib to park up but i'm just scoping parking spaces all the way along here now to be honest i want to try and leave the car as close to the hiking point as i can so we've got less distance to walk but yeah i think back there might have been the limit i might have to turn around and go back we'll have a look well the car park's over there which i can't park in overnight and we're right next to it so we're happy days mate but I'm not going to lie, we're about a day and two hours behind schedule, so I am not messing here. I'm going to get everything ready and we're going on the trail. Let's do it. Oh my days. Calm down, mate. Calm down, because there's a road. Oh, mama. He's going to explode. going to love it, though. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, my days. Wait, Charlie boy, wait. Fenton. Look, let's just say, on paper, in planning, with beautiful weather, sneaky little wild camp, bringing the Mutley and the Mini-Me, all sounding great. In reality, 26 kilos spread over two bags, a mad head mutt, and a mountain to climb in about two hours. Mate, this is gonna be a proper, proper mission. <sighs> let's do it, let's get on the way. days 20 on the nose you know oh mate something digging in me back and all that sucks ready Alf yes daddy <sighs> shall we go yes ah! <laughs> <laughs> well the original plan then is to uh, hike up on top of the kinder plateau 
and on our little spot called the Mermaid's Pool. It's supposed to be a little lake up there, possible wild swim, and a nice view down into what I think is Glossop. I'm not sure how long I can carry this 26 kilo. Thing is, we go past the reservoir, and we come to a point where we've got to climb up a cloth, which if you don't know what they are, they're like sort of a rocky riverbed between sort of the fell, if you like. Even if I give little man this one front bag, still got 20 kilos on me back at that point. So, <laughs> The plan might diversify, but the main shooting of a wild camp with the motley and the, the mini me is going to go, so we're all good. Release the hound. Release the hound! Don't release the hound. <laughs> he has been released. Go on then. Oh wow. <laughs> I've had to dump the front pack on, little man. I think I managed about a kilometre. Oh, I'd like to say it's a mile, but. I'm pretty sure it was only about a kilometre, but damn. It's a good time though. I was planning really about getting here about three o'clock in the middle of the heat, so that would have been a killer. All five now. It's dissipating a little bit of the heat, so still sweating my chungle off. Also, I was a little bit worried about Motley overheating, so it's good that it's cooled down a bit for him. It's not like he'll stop running at any moment, so. Hey, all right, Charlie boy. Come on, Fenton. 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 <laughs> oh man, wow. First shots of the reservoir then. And uh, yeah, we're supposedly heading somewhere up there, but this is hard work. And uh, little man's not even in sight. It's good to push yourself, but I'm not too sure how far I want to push little man. I don't want him getting mardy and super tired. So there is a spot that we're about halfway to and it's flat from here and it's where the cloche is split and you choose which way to go up. I know there's a nice little spot by a stream there we might be able to pitch up, so we'll see how it feels when we get there. Ah, oh, here he comes, little man. Doing well, mate, that was one of the tough bits. Nice, come and have a drink. Well, somebody's having the best day of their life ever. Aren't we, Charlie boy? Absolutely loving it. Sniffing-tastic. <laughs> Ah, oh, moving on then. I'll tell you what, mate, this is a epic, epic evening. About six o'clock, complete blue skies, down by the reservoir with the water, and phew, I don't care where I pitch now, I really don't. Original point was Mermaid's Pool, like I say, right up on the Kinder Scout, but I mean, look at this area, man. I just find a pitch somewhere up there with a view back down this way, it'd be nice. No messing, no rushing, no hard work. Yeah. Where's the fun in that? <laughs> you know we're going up Mermaid's Pool, man. And if I'm honest, I think it's up there, those rocks. <laughs> it's quite a way. Well, here we go. Decision point. Mate, it's busy with people. It's not what I wanted to see. There might be a little pitch over here, though. Otherwise, it's up and then up some more. Oh, this is what I wanted to know. Is Charlie going to be all right with the, with the sheep? And he doesn't look that bothered. He doesn't look interested, which is good. That's perfect. I was worried. No, no. Charlie, no. Oh, mate, no. Charlie. 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 Fenton. Come here. Fenton. No. Oh, this is madness. Check this area out. So we've got that view looking that way and honestly the most perfect pitch ever right there but we're right at the fork of the trail there'll be a million and one people walk past us all night in the early morning and everything so it's time to head up this is where it gets real charlie boy oh, man this yeah this is hard work and the dog's kind of pulling me up a little bit Oh man, pulling me around, damn. Oh mate, the freaking dog's just bolted mate. What a little shit. Proper bolted, there's a sheep right over there. And he was going right for it. And he wasn't stopping. Blowing my whistle. This is my fear, he can't be trusted. But I've got to give him his go. I've got to give him a chance. If he can just 
stop being a knobhead dog and behave, then he can have some amazing wild camping trips with me. But this is his trial, man. And at the minute, yeah, that was a big fail. Well, I've hiked up a little bit more just to look for a pitch. And I think this is the spot. Mermaid's pool's just over the way. I'll show you later, but uh, mate, it's not a bad view for the night, is it? I think I can make it work here somewhere. Just gotta go get the bags and the dog and the mini mate. Well, I'm not gonna lie. It's bumpy and lumpy and it isn't flat, but I'm just gonna give it a go, see if I can pitch you up. Let's get some stuff out of this bag. And if you're wondering why I'm not using my new bag that I got last week, it's because that's a 60 litre bag and this is 100 and it's full to the brim. Let's do it. Oh. Boom time then. New tent. And let's get the elephant out of the room first. I know it's not as stealthy as a single man, but it is going to fit me, Mutley, and the mini me in tonight. So I just hope it goes up all right. I'm going to put on time lapse. Let's do it. Well, fell in the dip, but and I haven't got the fly sheet on, but that's what I wanted to show you. Check this out. This is pretty cool, man. I mean, look at that. If you didn't want to put the fly sheet on over the evening, you can totally enjoy the night sky for all that. It's pretty cool, man. But uh, yeah, it might not be a uh, flat pitch. It's a bit rolly, but I'm going to make it work with a view like that for the night. Pretty sweet. All right, let's get the rest of it set up. So, tent's all set up and ready to rumble. I will show you a little bit more about that in a minute, but I've got to tell you, Unigare, they also sent me oh, one of these bad boys. I've got another sleeping mat. This is the P3. And I've got to be honest, like, you guys regular to the series, you'll know what I normally use, the old UL8 here. I've got to be honest, it's around the same price and it's a serious contender. It's got way more technology and whatnot than that thing. Let me get it out and I'll show you. And I tell you what, until it's pumped up, you're not gonna notice any difference here. Luckily, it comes with a pump sack. And because I've used these loads before, I'm probably gonna use my pump. <laughs> I've gotta give it a go, I've never used one. Yep. Alf, mate. Pass me the pump, please. Pump. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'll have that electric pump, please. I'm not being funny, like they are wicked. If you're not a dingbat and you know how to use them, you're gonna be saving yourself 25 quid just with a bag that you carry the, uh, the mat in. I'm about to pay 25 boys for a little pump, you know. Boom time, check this bad boy out. Seriously, like, it's almost like an Elon Musk wild camping love child of technology. It's just mental. For a start, the material that it's made of is really, really rugged. And I've got no fear of Muttley jumping all over it. Slight problem, when I mentioned the dog, he's managed to uh, escape his harness and run off. And who knows where he might be? Oh, mate. He's down there. And that, that was my fear. Where? Down there, I see him too. What, right over there? Yeah, down there. All the way down there. Oh shit, he's miles away chasing sheep. Well, I'm just gonna say it. This is the last time the dog ever comes wild camping, mate. Yeah. This was my fear. Insane. Yeah. Good news, got the dog back. He is never coming again. But the sleeping pad, honestly, look at how amazingly developed it is. It's got like, it's got a built in pillow and then it's got sort of ridges to keep you in. It's got this thing here for your waist, which is going to be fantastic for me. So I really struggle with my back there. And then the leg area is supposed to be designed as well. And it keeps your feet up a little bit at the end. Seriously, like, the thought that's gone into this thing's phenomenal. The only thing I will say is it pumps to three inches thick as opposed to six or nine or whatever else. 
some other mats do, which at first I thought that won't be enough. As soon as you lie down on it, it means nothing. It's so comfortable. And like I say, because of the ruggedness of it, I don't mind having it outside. I wouldn't do that with my other one. Really impressed with it. The Unigear P3. But all in all, truth be known, the, tr the proof is in the pudding. So I'm going to be sleeping on that tonight without the foam thing underneath me. So should say as well, the reason I'm not going to be using um, an under sheet tonight is because this is supposed to have an R2 rating, which is supposed to be like insulated enough for the ground temperature when it's up to like five degrees, which it should stay above that tonight. So they're saying like summer and autumn and maybe a bit of spring or something or spring and summer. So it's going to be interesting to see if it do actually get cold because I'm using a summer sleeping bag as well tonight. So yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Ah, oh, a moment of peace. And tranquility. Dogs tied up, cup of tea's out, and the view's inside, mate. Freaking eh? All the hard work, and all the chisnick, and all the up. We're up, not there. But just this minute, this moment. Yeah, man, it's all worthwhile. It might be different in five minutes' time, but for now, this one minute, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Stress. I gotta be honest, all in all, it's not really a bad little spot for a chill. And hey, that over there is the mermaid's pool. We probably could have walked about another 35 minutes and pitched over there, but yeah, it's late enough already. It's already half past eight, and it's time to get this gran on. Hey, what are you saying, Charlie boy? Younger? Ah, I've got a special run. Get out of it. Get out of it. Ah! Yeah, bloody dog. Fucking pain in the arse, you know, you know. <laughs> Get off me, you bloody thing. See, look, this is what he's like. Super affectionate. And then he sees a sheep and he's just gone, mate. You're a mad head. Right, food time. I'm not messing about tonight. Not just one, but two cookers tonight. Oh yeah, we're going full guns. Oh, sorry. Two tonight. Let's do it. Well, I'm not gonna lie. I don't think I'd really thought this one through too much. I've bought one liter of water to cook a load of spaghetti and for coffees. And I drink a lot of coffee. That's a nightmare. I should have bought at least another litre. So I'm not gonna leave them long. They're going little bits. Crap. <laughs> oh, I don't wanna use water, man. Oh, it's such a f like fine resource on the mountain, you know? Crap, that's a lot of water. And, oh man, that's half my water. And I just don't think I can use that for a cup of tea after eight. It's gonna be pasted up, you know. Ah, damn it. Oh well, you gotta eat. Oh, oh. all right. Oh mate, I'm really fearful. There's like a lot of grass around here. I don't want to set nothing on fire, you know what I mean? It looks like we might. All right, that's the pasta cooking. Now for the piece of resistance, all the ingredients. Meat that's looking doable, um, and all the gubbins. Oh, check this out. It's gonna get well messy, this bad boy. I've got muggies, I've got a bunion, and a garlic, and a few tomatoes to throw in, and then I've got my pasta sauce, man. I honestly don't know why I didn't prep all this at home. Bit of a bad move on my part, I think. It's gonna be a bit of a nightmare prepping all this. I've got to do all these muggies and that, and the bunion. Sure. I know I should have crushed the garlic, but you know, I haven't. So, there. <laughs> right, anyways, there's all the gubbins. Sneak a bit of cooking oil, and oh, the bottle's getting smaller, but the cooking oil looks a bit rancid. I don't know what's going on there. But hey, yeah, smaller bottle. Still got the oil. Now, a few days. All right, game on, you know, you know. Let's do this. Oh wait, I have to light it first, don't I? Come on, we're game on. Oh my God. Yeah, there's gonna be a little bit just around there that will light first off and then it'll be all right. Oh man, that's hot. Damn it. It's why I brought the bloody tea towel thing. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Hell no. Look, it's getting cooked. It won't be too bad. Frickin' hey, dude. That weren't great, was it? I think I need some more oil. All right, let's just get that in a bowl, I think. 
Bit of a mad one, this one. In with the meat. Oh, no. Not yet. Needs to come out of the bag. That'll help. Mate, that is not red anymore. Fucking hell, these things just don't balance. Right, that's the meat done. In with the other bits. Got a bit of a funky smell to them, but let's not worry about that. There's only a little bit of cheap shiznick on there, not as much as normal. It's good for you. Builds character. Builds up the immune system as well, you know what I mean? It's like having diseases in it, kids these days, man. They're all catching everything because you never go outside or any of that, you know what I mean? When we were kids, we were licking and eating mud and stuff, man. We were immune to everything. You get Ebola and you'd only have it for like two days and then you'd be right from it because you were like, yeah, got your system built up to the shit. These days, mate, no. Catch a common cold or a goner. But yeah, we're building up tolerance with a bit of sheep shiznit. Mate, in with the sauce Oh, this, this is the feast I wanted to cook on the mountain. I'm stoked, dude. And a good thing, little man's here to enjoy my burning sensation as well. Like the burnt food, you know, you know. Just got to boil that up, pasta's about done. Pray it don't freaking fall over on the floor, and we'll be good. Oh, mate, it's, it's all right. It's not the best pasta in the world, it's just about cooked right. A little bit stuck to the pan, but not too bad. And a bit of razzle-dazzle sauce, you do. Oh mate, the pan's the pan's had better days again. Yeah, looks like the dog's gonna feed well tonight. Good eh? Spaghetti bolognese on the mountain, you know. Game on. <gasps> I think I've got grated cheese as well. Hang on. Where's the grated cheese? No way, there was grated cheese, man. Where's that gone? I grated it. No! Oh, bollocks. And got me tomatoes. Damn it. There you go. <laughs> Two happy customers feeding away one over there and what the other there. Even got a bit of spag bowl. Right, once your time. fog and sort of mist coming in there's like a i don't know there's like a wetness in the air traveling around but check this out this is what this is all about man memories little man asleep in the back comfy as bow and even the dog man absolutely living his doggy dream hard work but it's been worth it pretty cool right i'm gonna get myself to bed catch you in the morning Oh. Yeah. Morning. Well, yeah, I'm being attacked by a dog. And to be honest, it's about 300 degrees in here at the minute. So I think I'm going to get up and get out of the tent because I'm starting to sweat my chunger off. It's a blue sky blazing day. I can see it through the roof. Well, I can't, but I can feel it. Well, that's a nice sight. The old water boiling for the coffee in the morning, but... uh. That's a nice sight as well, the bloody dog chilling for a change. Oof, what a nutter. Rocking it with three months again, you do, you do. Mate, I cannot believe the day today. Just absolutely fantastic. So stoked. Got a couple of plans for today, something I want to go and check out on the other side of the Peak District, to be fair. So, yeah, breakfast, chill about here till about 10 half 10, and then slowly make a move down the hill. I'm in no rush to like ditch out from this pitch and I think I'm figuring it out up here in the Peak District you know 
everybody moans about getting moved on and such, but I think you just got to be like conscious of where you're pitched. I'm up on the kinder scale. No one gives a damn, you know what I mean? I'm not going to get moved on, but if I'm down near some private land or in a forest near somebody's village, then they're not happy, are mm -hmm. I can't see any rangers hiking up that bloody hill to tell me to move on at 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. Right, coffee time. No way, the two sheep just came over to check out the dog. What a mental pair of sheep. Crazy. Really came really, really close just to look at the dog, winding him up. Oh, that's the last thing I need. Ah, oh, lie down, Charlie. Lie down. He's had a proper smack. I went mental. It's not funny when you spill my first coffee in the morning, I'm not going to lie, but I think this is what he needs. And I know it sounds horrible, but he needs a leader. He's a dog and he's a wild dog and he needs a proper pack leader. Oh, I don't want to be horrible. I love him to bits, but I really need him to be obedient. I can't have him chasing off sheep down the hill again, mate. That one mental. More importantly, update on the gear. Got to tell you, that sleeping mat, yeah, mate, legend. And what it is with it, I've got to be honest, like, I, I pitched the tent on a bit of a piddle, so I was sliding down the side of the tent, but it just feels, in a way, better than my normal sleeping pad. It's not as thick, and I think that's a bonus. Obviously, it's not an all-season sleeping pad. It's only good for two seasons, but I think that thickness is more than enough. Normally, I just feel a little bit too high and like I'm sliding around a bit. Didn't feel like that on that pad at all. Maybe it's because it's a lot wider as well. You've got more room to move around. I don't sleep on my back all night. I move around a lot when I'm in the tent. So that pad, spot on, mate. I'm well stoked. I'll, I'll probably take that with me again just to double test it out in my single man at some point. And talking of proof in the pudding, this tent, I'm genuinely really, really chuffed with it. Even though I pitched it on like a, a sort of tilt, not a problem whatsoever. I've got to show it to you because it's, it's just worth showing it. And I will say, check this out, there is a tent around that everybody's talking about from Idler at the minute for 50 boys. This, if you bought it from the American store, is £25 more than the Idler one. I'm not, you know, I'm just saying, I'm putting it into perspective, if you like. Let me show you what you're getting for that little bit extra. So just to show you from the start, what I do like and what I noticed last night is that these clips on the poles, it keeps the fly sheet completely away from the from the inner tent. So there was no moisture, no damp, no nothing. And I do think if it rained, it's going to flow off. I mean, it's not just about how waterproof the material is. It's 2000, so it's just above the minimum. But it's also designed. It's going to flow off, isn't it? And it's not going to be touching the inner tent for a start. Talking of this bit as well, mate. Storage space is just insane. I've got, last night I had my big bag down the side and I've got all my stuff over the other side and this is what I really like about it. You've got double storage at the back. I mean, this actually folds over and really fully zips up. So you've got more storage space at the back. You could get four rucksacks in there, not that you're ever going to carry that many, but easily enough space for storage. And then inside, I mean, we had the big wide pad last night and this pad and we still had space at the end to put bags and stuff and your, your jumpers and whatnot and electrics if you don't want them outside. But, I mean, you can notice it, this feature that I'm looking at right now. This is what does it for me, mate. Look at that, man. You can see straight through the tent. That means you can pitch up and have a view out of either side or, more importantly, if someone this size wants to get out for a wee in the middle of the night, hey, they've got an escape. Another thing about this tent I like, I think like, even if you weren't going to use it for wild camping, because it does weigh 3.2 kilos, I think it is, which is about three quarters of a kilo more than my single man, which ain't much really. I mean, look at the amount of tent you're getting for that. But I think it'd be good enough for wild camping or like on a normal campsite pitch. It ain't going to look out of, out of sorts on a normal campsite. And with the amount of sort of like pockets that it's got everywhere, built in there's another one over here as well i think there's one over there and you've got storage space as well so if you're on a campsite for a few days you can get like proper set up do you know what i mean with all your gubbins a few other things i like about this tent and i've got to be honest these pegs mate i'm not well i can pull it out i suppose these pegs are amazing it's not often you see decent pegs come with tents and they are nice don't know what they're made of but they are sturdy and they did the job well last night also these poles aluminium poles they just feel 
I don't know, they feel stronger than my single man, I've got to be perfectly honest. You can see as well what I did last night, I've got nine pegs in this thing. I don't use your guide ropes very often, you know I don't. And you saw how easy it was to pitch up. I literally had this thing up in about four or five minutes and I was messing about. But yeah, you could either use your guide ropes or you can just peg it up like that. I mean, we know wind. There was no problem last night whatsoever. Obviously, it's got all your normal bits with your sort of meshy doors and things. And I think this one actually unzips separately so you can have it zipped up at the bottom and have that open and have a bit of a view out the doorway if you wanted. Oh yeah, one last, last little feature that I'll show you. This sort of curtain thing that comes over the front porch, you can actually pull that out. I should have tried it, I don't know if I can do it. Um, don't think my poles are long enough, but you could probably pitch it up with a couple of hiking poles and have like a little doorway at the front. It's a well nice little feature, and I've got to be honest mate, all in all, I think it's a pretty nice tent. But yeah, the Unigear Space Doom 2 tent. I've got to be honest, I'll probably take it out a few more times, man, maybe with a mini me. I can't imagine I'm going to bring, bring him Motley with me anymore, but yeah, none too shab. Right, time for a sneaky bacon sandwich. It's getting late, mate. It's nearly 10 o'clock and we're still pitched up in the Peak District. Oh, I'm breaking all the rules of wild camping and I don't give a damn. <laughs> Food time. All right, breakfast time then. I'm not going to lie, mate. I'm, I'm off living the dream here, mate. This is absolutely fantastic. Off 10, 10 o'clock in the morning. Still not moved out, don't care, just enjoying the spot. <laughs> Buzzing. Buzzing, little dude. I mean, you think I mock it and, and joke when I say I'm living the dream, but check that out. We've got a nice little bottle of oil and we've got fresh bacon. It's not mold air. I mean, how rare is that? We are living the dream in here. Right, let's get it on. Oh, mate, I hope you don't set fire to this blooming area. Ooh, mama, straight off the bat. Right, let's, oh my god. Let's set fire. Oh my god. Yeah, well, Houston, we may have a problem. No. Ta -da. Oh, mate, we've had a nightmare here. Come here, mate, let me look. He's broke a tooth on my bacon sandwich. Let's have a little look, bro. There's one of your old teeth come out. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. There's a bit of blood there, mate. It doesn't look too great. Does it hurt? Are you okay? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Oh, mate, that's a freaking disaster on the mountain. Right, I'm going to have to sort this out. <laughs> Not bad me sandwich. Well, I've got to tell you, little dude, you got bigger kahunas than me. He's going in with an apple to try and pull out, on his own, a back tooth. I don't know, bro, whether that's a good idea or not, mate. Ow. It's going to really hurt, mate. Ow, 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 ow. Oh, bless. I mean, it is pretty loose. I could almost pull it out with my fingers, but God damn that hurt. Mate, how can that not be like excruciating pain? He's got like a really wobbly back tooth, man. I'd be in bits like passing out now, but I guess they don't feel as much when they're kids. Maybe them teeth ain't got as many nerves. Oof. Oh, mate. Poor sod. Oh, mate. Let me look. Open your mouth. No, I can't see. Oh God, I don't want to see. I don't know. Oh man, when I said at the start of this video, this trip had the potential for chaos, oof, I won't underestimate him. We've had a mad Fenton dog chasing sheep. We've bossed off the food over the floor. I don't know what else we've done. And now we've got a mini me with a broken back tooth. Wow, full on. It's been a good one though. <laughs> and we've all enjoyed it, but we just deal with these bits as it goes along. It is what it is, isn't it? But I think what I'm going to do they start packing up and tidying up the chaos and then slowly start heading down the hill and see if we can sort little man out. I think he wants to pull it out, so... And I'm guessing if it comes out, it's not going to work. It's just going to have that hole in his face, you know, you know. Oh, bless him. Right, I'm going to start packing up. <sighs> Let's pray for no more chaos. Here's a final kind of cool feature about this tent and the bag, believe it or not. Got a little tie strap. Goes round the actual tent and whatnot once you've packed it up. And then it's like drawspring bag, man. It's really good. Just so easy. Got your instructions as always on the bag so you ain't gonna lose them. And then you've got like two clippy bits, you know, you know. I mean, I don't know. You got a drawstring as well. Some people like to drawstring it first. I like to strap it first, but yeah, drawstring. And then two straps, man. Just gets it like as it should be, you know. Nice and tight then in your bag. Not taking up too much space. Brilliant. 
Well, just one last look at the spot as we've packed up, mate. What a fantastic, amazingly stunning view. It really was a blessing to be able to sit and enjoy that last night. But all things good and bad, hopefully, must come to an end at some point. So it's time to don the oversized buffalo and get ourselves down the hill. Oi. All right, nothing left but memories, you know, you know. Little man Don in the poles looking protastic and Motley dragging me down the hill. All right, game on. Well, just thinking as I do, what I might have done differently, you know, you know. Two main things. I think one's pretty obvious, not bring the freaking dog. And the other one, I wish we'd have got up here a couple of hours earlier than we did. Seven half seven was too late to get up here. Would like to have been up here at five. It's just a worry of the Peak District, you know what I mean? Didn't want to be sitting around here in the heat, like not being able to pitch up because it's Peak District, but I really don't think it would have mattered. No one would have said anything. So yeah, next time, earlier start up the hill. Apart from that, it was a fantastic wild camp, mate. Tent did well, all the equipment did well, food was good, epic having little man here, and altogether a, a pretty memorable wild camp. As for now, I think this is going to be a legendary point to end the episode with sickening views in the backdrop as we're heading towards them. We really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did all the good stuff, hit the like button, subscribe to keep up with the series, and definitely hit me in the comments. As always, take it easy, enjoy the camp, and stay stealthy. Gordon, have a great time. <laughs> you know you do.